A new bombshell report exposes Trudeau's shady plot to buy positive coverage from the biased CBC. Despite claiming financial hardship, the public broadcaster somehow scored an extra $42 million in liberal budget funds. The CBC and liberal government have long had a cozy, symbiotic relationship that continues to raise concerns about bias, cronyism, and misuse of taxpayer dollars. This friendly cash infusion comes despite the CBC just months ago threatening imminent layoffs and programming cuts only to conveniently backtrack now with bailout in hand. The perpetually circling money carousal between Trudeau and the CBC reveals deeper issues with accountability and reform. Is the CBC now just a propaganda arm of the Liberal Party? Why are they trading biased news for bailouts? Many have accused the CBC of blurring every ethical line between journalism and politics. This massive budget windfall will only fuel suspicions of an unholy alliance that serves neither taxpayers nor democracy. How far will Trudeau go to keep the CBC's glowing coverage flowing, and how long will Canadians tolerate their hard-earned money being used to push Liberal Party propaganda? Welcome back again to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. By now, Canadians should not be surprised by the Trudeau government's action. The Trudeau government is once again throwing taxpayers' money at the CBC instead of demanding fiscal restraint. Despite falsely warning of job cuts in December, their irresponsible budget allocates an additional $42 million to the public broadcaster. This is typical liberal tax and spend waste. The CBC claims the funding will save jobs but its bloated bureaucracy should look inward to make cuts before burdening hardworking Canadians. With over $1.4 billion in annual public funds, there is surely room for efficiency rather than more handouts. Moreover, the budget wastes millions on athlete funding and sports commissions. Supporting amateur pastimes is clearly not an essential government function. Their priority should be critical services, not entertainment. The budget also included $35 million over five years starting this year to support high performance through the Athlete Assistance Program. It would still get an additional $7 million a year afterward. The budget allocates an extra $16 million over two years to help support athletes, including those with concussions and mental health issues, and to advance inclusion and diversity. Circling back to the CBC, this cozy relationship between the Liberals and the corrupt organization benefits both parties, the CBC gets to keep asking for public funds, while glowing coverage helps the Liberals politically. It is a taxpayer-funded conflict of interest. The CBC continues to closely align its coverage with Liberal talking points on issues like the carbon tax, gun control, and identity politics. They have evolved into a propaganda arm rather than an unbiased news organization but clearly investing and paying off a news channel that only speaks in the favor of the government is a win-win situation. This budget proves the Liberals have no interest in fiscal restraint despite massive deficits. They would rather tax, borrow, and spend recklessly than make difficult choices to put Canada's finances in order. Trudeau doesn't care about funding quality journalism as much as having a friendly outlet to push his agenda. He expects positive coverage in exchange for preferential budget treatment. It is a quid pro quo funded by taxpayers. Canada needs more fair and balanced journalism. The CBC has strayed markedly from its original public mandate, yet still Trudeau rewards them for backing his ideological crusades. Conservatives recognize that an unbiased public broadcaster would serve Canadians better than a Liberal Party mouthpiece. Voters need objectivity, not partisan cheerleading from their news sources. A Conservative government would reform the CBC to restore proper journalistic standards. More opinion diversity and less political bias would help redeem its reputation. If not, defunding should be considered. Trudeau's perpetual CBC bailouts are just another example of liberal fiscal mismanagement. Canada deserves leadership that will be pruned with public resources. Polling shows nearly 60% of Canadians believe the CBC favors the liberals in its political reporting. This is devastating for their reputation as an unbiased news source. I think it's fair to say that most Canadians want the CBC defunded. Canadians should reject Trudeau's expensive symbiotic relationship with the public broadcaster. Both the CBC and the Liberals would benefit from some tough love going forward. Canadians deserve an impartial CBC focused on keeping citizens informed. CBC President Catherine Tate claims the funding will preserve jobs, but in reality the bloated CBC could find ample savings through overdue cuts to its cushy executive compensation packages. However, efficiency is unimportant when Liberals keep signing blank taxpayer-funded checks. Previously, the CBC threatened imminent layoffs and programming cuts in a transparent ploy to secure bigger handouts from their liberal benefactors. 
Now with new funding in hand, those threats have conveniently vanished for the time being. Shamefully, $14.9 million in bonuses were still awarded to CBC executives last year, even while crying poor to the public. This exposes the utter lack of financial accountability at the CBC under the Liberals' negligent oversight. At a January 31, 2024 meeting of the House Heritage Committee, MP Catherine was questioned about CBC slash Radio Canada's plan to cut 800 jobs while still paying bonuses to executives. In response, she defended the executive bonuses as performance-based pay, not frivolous awards. She argued the federal government supports investing in the public broadcaster when needed. MP Catherine's defensive stance on CBC executive bonuses reveals the liberal government's position. Despite cutting hundreds of jobs, they believe taxpayer-funded bonuses for managers are justified. This shows where the Trudeau government stands, willing to keep funding and protecting the CBC, including controversial executive compensation. At a House of Commons committee, CBC President Catherine Tate was asked repeatedly why the Crown Corporation is cutting 800 jobs, but still planning to pay bonuses to executives, including to Tate herself. The witness doesn't want to answer my question. It's very simple. Will she be given a bonus in 2020? It's not my decision whether I get a, get a bonus or not. One of many testy exchanges as Tate answered questions about why CBC doled out $15 million in extra compensation last year to some 1,100 staff. Would you consider asking the board of directors to reconsider the bonus structure at CBC? I certainly will consider all scenarios. However, we have a program in place. First of all, these are not frivolous awards at, given at Christmas time. These are, this is performance pay. And for an, for an individual, let's say, who's making $80,000, a portion of that pay is held back. That's what performance pay is. The questions come as CBC faces a $125 million projected budget shortfall this coming year. She kind of came in hot and uh, seemed to be quite defensive and uh, was speaking over uh, MPs. Uh, you know, particularly the ones uh, from the Conservative Party who themselves were coming in hot. Ottawa provides the CBC $1.3 billion annually, though the union says the CBC remains one of the most underfunded public broadcasters in the world. The two sides are currently in contract negotiations. It's really that issue of funding. If we do not, if we are not competitive at Radio-Canada CBC with other organizations, we will lose key personnel. And that is across the board, unionized, non-unionized. A spokesperson for CBC says so far it has laid off about 100 people, including 10 managers. Marina Von Stackelberg, CBC News, Ottawa. After it was reported in December 2023 that CBC slash Radio Canada planned to lay off 10% of its workforce, amounting to over 600 jobs. Bloc Québécois MP Ellen Therrien raised this issue at the House Heritage Committee, questioning whether they were aware of the significant job cuts. He also noted that CBC President Catherine Tate's contract was just extended 18 months to January 2025. Therrien suggested it seems contradictory for Tate to claim she will fight disinformation while cutting 600 jobs. Mr. Speaker, CBC Radio Canada management at 2 p.m. met with the corporation's employees to deliver some very bad news. Things are not going well in the world of media, Mr. Speaker. Over 600 jobs are being cut. That's more or less the same news that Quebec announced at the beginning of November. That means that our culture, our sense of belonging to our regions, and the quality of information will all suffer. So here is my first question. How long had the Heritage Minister been aware that these cuts were coming? The Honourable Canadian Heritage Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to start by saying that my thoughts are with all employees of CBC Radio-Canada who are currently meeting with CBC Radio-Canada management. We know that there is a significant crisis in the media sector. This is caused by the dominance of digital platforms in ad spaces and also it's related to production costs. We reversed the Harper government's cuts to media. We reinvested in our public broadcaster, Mr. Speaker, and the Conservatives may want to block Canadians from accessing our public broadcaster, but we will continue to be here for CBC Radio Canada, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, 
Catherine Tate, CEO of Radio Canada, had her mandate extended by 18 months last June. Her mandate was extended to January 2025. She said that's 18 months to fight disinformation. Well, cutting hundreds of jobs over the next few months means cutting not disinformation, but information. Basically, Ms. Tate is not there to combat disinformation. The government extended her mandate to allow her to move forward to making these cuts. At least that's the impression we're getting. So is this what was intended when her mandate was renewed? Seriously. Catherine was also grilled and questioned two months ago about whether she is still going to hand out executives' bonuses. Previously, she had defended the bonuses as performance-based pay. But this time, Tate reversed her stance and now claiming the decision on bonuses is made by the CBC Board of Directors at the end of the fiscal year. Will you be giving bonuses to executives? My, my response to that question is to say that we have a process a rigorous process. It is not my decision to award performance pay. It is, in fact, the decision of the board of directors, and that decision comes at the end of the fiscal year. We have another two months before we reach the end of the fiscal year. And as I have also said in public, everything is on the table. So we will see at the end of fiscal year, based on results and where we are financially. So as a CEO, you do not make the decision. You have no say in whether or not bonuses are granted. All of the management team uh, uh, measures and analyzes our results on an annual basis, which are published very clearly in As our quarterly reports. As the CEO, in the you have no reports. say in whether or not bonuses are given. All of the management team presents to the board of directors the results of our year against KPIs, key performance indicators that have been tracked throughout the year. And based on the analysis and the results, uh, the board of directors makes its decision. The cozy Trudeau CBC Alliance encourages this blatant waste of taxpayer funds. In return, the CBC serves as a propaganda mouthpiece to aid Trudeau's partisan interests. This quid pro quo is an affront to journalistic integrity. CBC President Tate ludicrously claims the organization is underfunded despite receiving billions annually. The conservatives know the only solution is dramatic structural reforms, not perpetually giving more money to liberal cronies. During the latest Heritage Committee appearance, CBC President Catherine Tate defended the public broadcaster's funding levels at $33 per Canadian, a dime a day. CBC slash Radio Canada is one of the worst funded public broadcasters in the world, with four times less funding than the UK and France and eight times less than Germany, Tate said. Until that situation changes, we must continue to manage with what we have and do our very best to stretch limited resources to meet our mandate. Clearly, liberal favoritism and lack of oversight has bred deep corruption in how the CBC manages public funds. Canadians deserve better than liberal propagandists squandering their hard-earned money. The Trudeau-CBC unholy alliance erodes public trust in institutions. Canada needs a fiscally responsible government that will finally fix the broken. Apparently what CBC wants, CBC gets. Conservatives aim to break this endless loop of liberal favoritism and CBC cronyism. The CBC should support itself through public service journalism, not endless reliance on the taxpayer dime. If reforms fail, defunding must be on the table. The CBC needs tough love, true independence, and accountability. Not more public money with no strings attached. Canadians deserve better from their public institutions. The CBC has strayed from its purpose into a partisan abyss. The biased broadcaster does a disservice to all Canadians restore proper standards, enact real oversight, and end the cash giveaways until public trust is renewed. The Trudeau-CBC relationship is emblematic of a bigger problem. Liberals addicted to spending and entities addicted to public funds. Canadians ultimately pay the price through higher deficits and institutional decay. The time has come to intervene and rehabilitate this high-cost, low-benefit dependency. Canada deserves responsible leadership that respects taxpayers. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau will ever stop spending unnecessary money at every given chance? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.